muffins hello it's been almost a month since the last update and today is my six month anniversary of when I chose recovery yay so I figured I would make this today um, and I also happen to have time so here we go. So you're going to see me shifting a lot, and that is because last Friday I was learning how to skateboard, not do tricks, just stand on the board, just go on the board. And I fell off of it, went tic-tacking, and landed on my tailbone, and I bruised it. Yes, so right now I'm sitting half on a pillow because <laughs> I'm not supposed to be sitting straight up um, so I'm sitting on one side and I'm going to be shifting around while I do this and yes I have one of those lovely you donut pillows that are hemorrhoid pillows but I keep that in the car uh, healing time for this is four weeks for bruised and eight weeks for fractured and it's painful I, it's bananas that that is going on with me um, along with all my other medical stuff, which I'm going to tell you guys about. Um, first, I'll do eating disorder stuff, I guess. Or no, I'll do medical stuff. Um, so, I was supposed to have a big, a big scary appointment on June 26th, which was Friday, with the urologist. But they canceled it on me. And they wanted me to wait until September, but I told them no. And when she looked at my chart, they were like, okay. So my appointment is actually this Monday, the 5th, 4th, 5th. And I was waiting until I had my appointment and I knew exactly what I had and I was dealing with before I shared it with you guys, but I'm going to share it. Um, so there's multiple things going on. Uh, some of you know this, some of you don't. I have three kids. My middle guy, Marley, was, he's about to be 12. So at birth, he was 11 pounds, one ounce, and 23 or 22 inches long. And I had him vaginally. It was a 24 and a half hour labor. It was really traumatic. Uh, I had a bunch of physical trauma. And then I had postpartum for almost a year after Part of the physical trauma I had was nerve damage on the entire right side of my body. I couldn't sit on it. I couldn't pick him up with the right side. I couldn't walk. Um, and that was from pushing for four hours before my cervix was dilated to 10. It was only dilated to eight. I was at the Bryn Mawr Birth Center um, and I had a completely incompetent midwife. Do I think the whole entire practice is incompetent? No. Was that midwife incompetent? Fuck yes. Yes, she was. Okay, so um, I also had a hematoma the size of a golf ball that went undetected by them. They sent me home after I gave birth without giving me a physical, whatever. They were negligent. I could have had a suit against them. I didn't. I was too stressed out, and I had postpartum. It was a hard year that year. Um, and I'm stubborn and Italian and whatever. I was trying to get through it on my own. So now 12 years later, there, I'm dealing with stuff that is most likely the result of that um, or a consequence effects of that birth. I have nerve damage that causes in my vagina. My dad already knows this, so dad, you don't have to turn away. It's embarrassing, but it's also another reason why I wasn't saying this. It's really quite embarrassing. But okay, I have nerve damage, which slows down the message from my bladder to my brain for when I have to urinate. Um, I have what they call delayed urination. It doesn't hurt or anything, but it takes me an abnormally long time to go to the bathroom. If you've ever seen me do that, that's what's going on in there. I have to actually sit there and focus and, and will myself 
to pay. Um, I have urine leakage. It has gotten worse over the years. I never realized I was too young to be having that. It started when I was 31, 30. I thought that was old and I was just getting old. Didn't realize that that was too young for that. Um, it got a lot worse over the years and recently it's been really bad to the point where it happens when I'm walking, just walking. Um, it happens during sex. Yes. Also another thing that happens during sex is my muscles are very weak. And so holding a partner in is difficult um, because of the nerve damage. I have loss of sensation. I basically don't feel anything. It feels like this, like if you just do this and poke yourself, that's what it feels like. Like there's something there a little, but it's not like, <laughs> it's not like this. It's almost like if you imagine you're trying to squeeze something with your hands and instead of being able to go like this, you can only go, you can only use them this far. So the muscle weakness and the muscle weakness and maybe some of the nerve damage is also from what they think is a prolapsed uterus. Yes. Do you know what that means? Or a prolapsing uterus or a prolapsing bladder too. They're not sure. That means it's all dropping down, yo. That is a hysterectomy. That's, that's what they do. It could be that some of my nerve damage is because my parts are laying on top of things that they shouldn't be. It could be that the nerve damage is irreparable from 12 years ago from Riley's birth. And another thing, if I do have to get a hysterectomy, one of the <laughs> side effects that happens often is nerve damage. <sighs> yes, so. There you have it. I will know on Monday better what exactly I'm dealing with and what I will have to do. Um, it's been devastating. You know, I think all of you or most of you know that I was raped when I was 19. And from then until now, until now, until James really, but even more so now, he was the first. It took all of those years for me to have an empowered sexual relationship. And now I have the most empowered, like I feel most empowered over my sexuality and over my body um, and my recovery. I'm finally in a place where I feel empowered and, you know, strong. And now I feel like my body is betraying me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> keep saying when I was a kid, I wanted to be a nun. So maybe I am going to turn out to be a nun. Who knows? So I'll let you guys know when I know what's going on more, but that's what it's been. It's been really hard and painful a lot. And then I just severely bruised my tailbone. And this is one area that doesn't need any more drama or trauma. <laughs> Boo! Okay, so that's my medical stuff. I also had nerve damage in my wrist um, coming from up here somewhere. But that has gotten magically better. I don't know if it's because I was wearing a splint and resting it. My mother told me. She was an occupational therapist. I was doing exercises for it. Like this. It, but it's almost all the way better. It only hurts if I go like this, and it only hurts a tiny bit. Where it used to hurt, I couldn't put, I couldn't drive. I couldn't. It was very painful. So that was going on too, and that's magically getting better. All right. So eating disorder wise, I'm doing really well. I keep weight restoring. I keep buying bigger everything, bigger jeans, bigger shorts, bigger underwear. I had to go back and replace a bunch of my basics with the next bigger size because um, I'm not that little anymore. And I have moments of missing it, being that little, but then they're replaced with, I know that that was unhealthy for me. And 
it's foreign having this kind of a body, but it's not a bad thing. My curves are back. I'm actually curvy. When I'm underweight, I'm straight. When I'm at a proper weight and I'm taking care of myself, I'm curvy. And I'm curvy. <laughs> My boobs are like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, and it's, it's good. It's fine. It is. I even bought jeans or shorts two sizes bigger just because. Um, they're not giant, but I don't know. Sizes aren't bothering me so much anymore because what it is more is about is am I healthy? Am I being healthy? Yes. Am I taking care of me? Yes. Is it all kind of evening itself out? Yes. Do I restrict? No. Do I eat pretty much whatever I want? Yes. Do I get enough? Yes. Um, Georgette and I one night were, oh, I should, this is my room. I changed the house around a little. I'll explain that in a minute. But we're sitting on the bed, about to be bedtime. And I had on this, this is my little bralette flit. I won't show you all the way. And boxer shorts. And she said, Mama, you look a lot better. And she said it was weird for her because all she's known and all she can remember her whole life is me being too skinny, but she never knew it was too skinny because that's all she knew. But seeing me like this, she realizes how skinny I was and how different it was and that I look better to her now. And it's weird for her because of how different I look. I've also, my sister also said to me that I finally look healthy and I don't look like a person who's weight restoring. I look like a person in great shape who takes good care of herself, which was interesting to hear. But I want to say that the body image stuff gets easier and it does. It's getting easier. Um, it's still struggle like kind of sometimes in my head, but it's much less. So the more you put into it and the more you fight against that stuff, the, the negative things, the easier it gets, it really does. And let your body figure itself out and know that you're going to fluctuate. And when you first put on weight, it's going to probably be all in one spot. Give yourself some time for it to even out. Keep, keep doing what you should be doing, what you need to be doing for yourself. You know, you deserve it. So that's where I am eating disorder wise. I'm doing very well. Six months. Um, I went and got a tattoo today, but I didn't get a recovery tattoo. I want to wait until, before in my head, I was like, I'll wait six months, but it doesn't feel right yet. I want to wait at least a year, maybe two. But right now my feeling is I want to wait at least a year until I have a year before I get it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, so this is in my room because we have rearranged the house we're in the process of it um using the space differently my oldest set is 18 he graduated from high school and he is moving out tomorrow he chose to move out uh he's going to live with his stepfather and that's just crazy i always knew i knew it was coming for years i knew it was coming so it's weird but you know, you don't have, you don't own your kids. You have them and then you learn how to let them go from the moment you know they're in you. It's a lesson in learning how to let them go. So he's going to go on his journey and we'll, he'll, he's always going to be my son just because he doesn't live here. You know, it's going to be a little bit of weirdness, but just getting used to not having him around. Um, but I actually am happy for him and I feel happy for him that he will figure out his path. He's going back to the school he went to this year part-time, and he is going to be teaching class two days a week there. That's really good, and, you know, I think he's going to find his way on his own terms, and I'll be here. So we're changing the house around. Um, there's a lot more art happening in this house, like making of art, and a lot more people coming at once to make art. And my house is kind of tiny. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know if it's tiny, but it's small. 
So just moving some things around and this, my desk came up here in the process. I'm going to get a big giant art table for like six to 10 people to sit at at once and have a dedicated art space, which is exciting. Yes. So that's my house update. on. It was about a month ago, the last time I updated was the night that I was pretty sure he was using and I will update you on that. I saw him the next day because he had left a bag of his clothes here. So I had a bag of his stuff um, and art stuff and I went to give it to him and he looked horrific, terrible. Um, and he just straight admitted everything that he did. He told me everything. And that was the first time he had used in two and a half months, almost three months. Um, we talked a lot about it. He came to a lot of realizations for himself. I was in the place where I wanted him to go and do this on his own. I felt like I, I wasn't sure, but I needed to be separated from him for a little while, so we did. And for a week we didn't see each other, and then we did see each other for one night. And then another week went by, um, and I can't fully remember. I know another week went by and we saw each other again. And that's when things started changing. He had been doing the things he needed to do for himself going to meetings, getting, looking into getting a sponsor, talking with other people, making a, a decision for himself. Um, his drug situation is, is serious, but it's complicated to explain, but I've had a lot of experience with this, um, a lot, too much. And after feeling it out and taking some time, I have decided that where I want to be is with him during this. And this isn't to save him because I can't. And I really don't have any energy left for people where I have to do the work for them. I can't, it just repulses me. I can't, I can't do it. The more further I get into my own recovery, the less time I have for bullshit from anybody, including myself. So I wanted to be by his side not saving him, but be by his side during it. And that's what we are doing. Um, he's the best relationship I've ever had. And he treats me fantastically. And he supports me and he believes in me. And we don't have the same music taste and we don't have even the same exact political views. We have similar things, but we're able to respect each other in all of those ways and love each other despite them. Do you know what I mean? Like our connection is pretty special and he makes me be a better me and I make him, not make, but you know, us together makes me a better me and him a better him. Um, well, I don't know what else to say. I know that there are some people out there who are very concerned for me and think that I am choosing wrong and not choosing myself and I just want to be loved and I'm picking someone who's bad for me and he has never been bad for me. There have been rocky moments in there. The man has a complicated past and I know it, what it is, and I understand it, and um, I'm not putting him ahead of me. I don't put anyone ahead of me. I don't even put the kids ahead of me, because if I don't put me first, I can't take care of anybody else, and that is just the truth, just the truth, so I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. I guess if you have questions, you can ask me. 
them, send them to me. Um, I did get a text message from my homie, from my homie, my homegirl, soul sister, Sammy Jane, who was very worried about me and my distance. And I'm going looking through it right now, but I want to make sure there's nothing on my address. I'm not losing. It's just Sammy was concerned I was losing myself and, and that everything I said about Paisan, I went back on. And I don't know if I went back on it, but I evolved it. Different things happened, so I was flexible about it. I gave myself space and time. I've been distant in general with people just because I'm taking care of me and I'm doing for me. And also my sister and my nieces have moved, my brother-in-law, Closer. Now they're back in the area and I've been spending time with them and there's a lot of really intense stuff going on there. Um, and I'm putting my energy in the places that require it in here first, in my kids second, in my relationship with my family and my, in my relationship with Paisan, my house, my life, my artistic life my spiritual life. So I don't, I'm, and I'm getting sleep, more sleep. I'm not, you know, so I'm less available to a lot of other people because I'm taking care of me. I'm not, you know, I'm just less available right now. There are moments and there's a lot of shit going on <laughs> here. So the medical stuff is really big for, it still is really big, but I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling because it's been so long since I've done one of these. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm staring at Alexander McQueen, a picture of him. He's right beyond here on my wall. It's a picture of him and his eyes. It's just all I can see above the top of my computer are his eyes. So, I guess there's been a lot more going on with the kids and with my almost ex, but the summary of all that is that everything is working out. Um, it's working itself out. We're working everything out. There's been a lot of crazy ups and downs with things. Um, but we're all in a good place. Sorry, I have Christmas lights. Thank you, see. And I just did something I probably shouldn't have done with them. I don't know if it's a fire hazard. There we go. Okay. So, hi. Thank you all. Thank you all. I could not be here without you. I would not be here without all of you and my therapist and my family. <sighs> Thank you to all of you guys fighting your own fight. Keep fighting it. You're worth it. Keep fighting it. Just have faith. Please try to have faith. Have faith. Just keep doing what's right for you. Give yourself the chance. You deserve it. So do I. All right, lovelies. Ciao.